Let's look at number two. At verse 18, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So all the riches that accompanies up in glory over here of what his inheritance that he has for you. Remember, we have the inheritance of God the Father. Remember that? And you automatically get this inheritance from the Father which is the glories and the riches up in heaven. The question now is, the question now is, how much do you know about it? How much do you know about his riches that are within the glories of heaven? Remember, I taught to you in previous verses on Ephesians, that's a subject that we should be studying more intensely about our destiny up there rather than people who are infatuated with a fantastical destiny down here when the Antichrist takes over, when they're not even here if you're saved by the blood. So you should be delving more into that. And we looked at some of that, right, at the previous verses. We talked about grace. We talked about adoption, predestination, redemption, and it just made you want to run and shout, sealing. Remember that one? Yeah, remember that. Of course she remembered that one. She threw a water bottle on that one. She sure remembered that. All right, let's look at uh, verse 19. The third thing we should know. What is the exceeding greatness of His power? You, God wants you to also know the third thing about exceeding, how exceedingly great His power is. To what? To us word. To us word. Now, us word means toward us. That's the idea of that wording. It means toward us. And then the King James Bible made it simpler for you, us word. Amen. So if you want to talk more shortly and your tongue is kind of lazy and you don't want to say toward us, just say us word. That'll save you a lot of breathing space. <laughs> so the third thing is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. For us. So God gives you his power. Who believe? If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you got a power in you according to the working of his mighty power. If you believe, the power that's in you is follows accordingly to how he works within his power. So that's an important verse that actually you can use on prayer. Do you not realize that God also wants you to know about His power. But this power, you already have it. Why? Because you serve a powerful God who already has the power and He gives it to you. What kind of power? The power that you have is actually, look at this one. Verse 20, 21, 22, 23. I'm just going to read read it all straight through, okay? That way you can get the idea. Which he wrought in Christ, that he worked, that he was able to manifest within Jesus Christ himself. So Jesus Christ having that power. What kind of power? When he raised him from the dead. The power that literally raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Because remember, Christ is in you, the hope of glory, with the resurrection power that's so strong enough that if you die, he can take your dead body up at the rapture. It's traveling through outer space. That's as powerful as the, the power that God gives to you. You have it, man. Can you believe that? Let's keep reading. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. This power that resurrected Jesus Christ also put him within the right hand of the heavenly places. So Jesus Christ is actually at the right hand of God. So if we're looking at toward this direction, then the Lord Jesus Christ would be seated right over here. So he is right now sitting at the right hand of the Father up in heavenly places. So up above the heavens, you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ is side by side. But pretty soon, the Lord Jesus Christ, He's going to be the one who's on that throne that the whole world at Revelation 5 is going to bow down and worship Him, actually. They're going to bow down and worship Him. 
so this power of Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father and resurrected, that also is yours. Because remember at Revelation 2, well, you know what? We should turn over there. Go to Revelation 2. What did he spoke to the church here? One of the seven churches. He mentioned, if we look at Revelation chapter 2, that he gives you the throne that the Son is also sitting on that is right next to the Father. That is sitting right next to the Father. Let's look at the book of Revelation chapter 2. And then uh, I didn't mark this verse down, so let me see if I can find it real quickly here. Yada, 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 yada. Okay. Probably chapter... Th uh, okay, so verse 26 is one of them. We can look at that one. Notice it says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. So notice that as Jesus Christ received this power to rule and reign over people, the church is also promised that as well. We're also going to look at chapter 3, chapter 3. And let's see if this might have a, a more specific wording. Verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my what? Throne. Jesus is speaking. So you're offered that. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his what? Throne. So that power that Jesus Christ has to sit on the throne next to the Father, you're also offered that as well. That's a huge blessing. Wow. Now we also understand that this has a another application toward the tribulation but remember revelation 2 and 3 is double application as i taught you so you can see a spiritual you can see the spiritual application behind that one for you now let's turn to ephesians chapter 1 again ephesians chapter 1 and then let's see how the scriptures become more revelatory on this matter with this power that's in you so this power that's in you is the one that put Christ at the right hand of the Father, resurrected Him, makes you travel through outer space and resurrect your dead body. Verse 21, far above all principality, which is far above where Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father. This power is far above every principality. That's rulership, reign and rank, every ranking in this world. And power, it's above all other powers you can think of. Whether it be the rich or the military or presidency, it don't matter. It's above that power. And might. It's above every person who is mighty in strength. And dominion. Those who have a kingdom. Those who have a kingdom. People to rule over. And every name that is named. It's above every name that is named today. Not only in this world. Not just in this world that we're living in. But also in that which is to come. Even in the future world, if this world were to blow up and be gone, the next world that is to come, Christ's name will still be above every name. So that power at verse 20 is above all those things in the universe, basically. Do you see that? It's above everything in the universe. <laughs> and hath put all things under his feet. See that? Everything goes underneath the feet of Jesus Christ. He rules and reigns over everything. That's his power. So, one thing to understand as I keep reading over here, it says, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So, he's the head over everything, and he gives all of that to who? The church. But a lot of people misunderstand to think that all things, then what about the devil? What about sin? What about everything evil that's going on? If you're a Calvinist, then you'll say that God is in everything, but no, God is not. Sin is sin. God is not a part of that. He don't decree it to come, a, to, come to pass. That's all of man's own doing and efforts. But the idea about all things that you've got to understand is all things where generally, and then there's obviously exceptions. I mean, we still do it today. For example, I'll say that I trust everybody here. Uh, everybody here in my church is a saved Christian. But then, what if a person has a child or a baby? The, it, does that mean that I'm saying that the baby received Christ for his or her salvation? No, of course not. 
but you'll see pastors saying that everyone in my church knows how to win souls or uh, is, is to say person going to heaven, but then what are you going to do about the little babies? See, so it's just a general statement. It's just a general statement. We'll say, I clean up everything in my house. Well, what about like underneath the couch? Is that what you meant by everything? You know, what about between the tiles and etc.? What about the roof? <laughs> if you paid attention to your roof, <laughs> maybe there's some cobwebs that you missed out, right? What about inside your fridge? <laughs> everything in your house, sometimes there are gross stuff in your fridge that you just neglected. <laughs> some stains. So see, that's the idea. We all say that, like everyone, everything, but we mean as a general statement general statement. So when we're looking at a practical aspect, God and Christ is in control over everything that's going on and he reigns over and rules over everything. But actually it literally becomes more literal when he takes over the universe as king and kicks the devil off of his throne. Then it literally becomes where everything out of creation and anything you can think of is Christ. Why? Because everything that's evil is separated from that. It's separated from outside God's creation and cast into hell, which we know at Revelation chapter 22, right? Revelation 21, 22, the Bible says he creates a new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. But then at Revelation 21, 22, it says, but without, see that, separated from that are what? Dogs, lost people, lost people. Okay, so... Now understanding the doctrinal point, let's return the totality. Let's summarize 19 through 22. You ready? So 19 through 22, the idea is, is that the power that resurrected Jesus from the dead, put him at the right hand of the Father, is able to rapture you, resurrect you, put you at the right hand of the Father, and not only that, rule over all of creation, that power God gives to you. Wow. Glory. All to you. There's a teaching that I uh, talked about. I think it's titled Prayer That Bends the Laws of Nature, pretty much. That's literally true. It changes, it changes practically time, space, matter, energy. You'd be surprised. Prayer is the only power that can reach through all those things. And you have that power. That's the power of prayer. Do you realize what you're holding in your hand? But you need to operate it. You need to pray it. You need to use it through prayer to the Lord. I mean, what kind of prayer can actually resurrect a lost sinner into a saved soul? What kind of power except the power that you hold in your hand and that's why you pray for it? A power that's beyond medicine and science that a person gets healed in body and mind. Sometimes the Lord grants healing to a person. And that's all done through what? Prayer. Not and touching a person and knock over a person. Person don't heal, it's the power through in you, the prayer. That's the idea. Power of prayer where all of a sudden your money runs out and there's no econo and economic standards, economic standpoints and statistics, you should grow more broke, but all of a sudden there just happens to be grocery bags in front of your door, money in your mailbox, or something that the IRS overlooked or the credit card companies overlooked oh, yeah. and then you just get that surplus oh, yeah. Amen. you know what I'm talking about oh, yeah. that goes beyond typical scientific standards see it's outside of that this is the power that God gives to you and that's only done through what prayer Amen. Lord provide my needs boom God gives to the church you have that power but the thing is this, is that some people think that because we have this power, then why is it that God's not answering my prayer? If you look at the last part of verse 19, see? The first part says, greatness of His power to us, word, but what? The last part of verse 19. According to the working of His mighty power. It's according to His will. According to how He works His power, not what your flesh wants to do in its own power. If you think that your fl fleshly power is going to have to force God's power to follow accordingly to your flesh, you're dead wrong. That's not how it works. If you want the power of prayer to be answered, it is mightily done through what? Not through your own flesh, but totally un unto God the Holy Spirit. If you connect fully, completely, completely with the Holy Spirit on that one. Alright, so we'll cover verse 22 and 23 at our next Ephesians Bible study. I hope that was a blessing to you and you learned a lot. This is the 
Uh, if there's a lesson that you learned from today, which you should not be bored about, is these three things. Do you have them? Did you pay attention to it? This is something that you should learn more than actually your revelation studies that yeah. we went to. It's these three.